So I poured this resin into this earring mold, hoping that I could save it. And I thought I'd show you how I did. Hey, welcome back to my channel. It's Wendy here from Team Pitch Crafts and I hope you're doing okay. Now you may have seen recently that Daniel Cooper put out a video about dichroic film. I had to watch it because I've been searching for dichroic film for so, so long. Now I do have some that is flat and because it's flat, it doesn't give off the dichroicness that I wanted. But when I watched Daniel's video, it suddenly dawned on me what I was missing. Why didn't I think of it? <laughs> so I've had a chat to Daniel and he was like, what are you doing sitting there? Just get on with it, girl. <laughs> OK, Daniel, um, I will put Daniel's link in the description box below. But yeah, this was something I was searching for. And now I can't believe it was so simple. Firstly, before I go on to the dichroic film, I wanted to show you about this resin. This resin had been mixed about 35-40 minutes prior to me pouring. Now I had no clue what I was going to use this resin for at this point. It was left over from my previous project, so I thought I'd put it in this earring mould. It was going off. It was literally sticky and very hot when I was pouring it into this mould. It was full of bubbles, not that you could actually see it, but because it was going off, the bubbles couldn't escape. So I poured this resin into this earring mould, hoping that I could save it. And I thought I'd show you how I did. So I'm obviously trying to get rid of any bubbles that are stuck in 90 degree angles, but that doesn't stop the fact that the resin itself is full of bubbles. I squirt it with isopropyl alcohol to try and help it to get rid of those bubbles but it really is not working it's really gone past that working stage so i got out the heat gun now even though this resin is hot to enable it to let bubbles escape you need to heat it up more it becomes then more liquid and is able to degas on its own which is what resin needs to do to be able to get rid of all those little micro bubbles to stop it looking foggy and unappealing. So by heating it up, you're actually giving it more life. And it does work. This resin really wasn't good for anything, but by heating it up, it got a second lease of life. Once I'd watched Daniel's video and realised I was searching for the wrong thing and I needed a heat gun to make what I wanted, then I went online and I found a company called Turner's Art Supplies, I think. Their link will be in the description box below. I bought every colour film that they had and this one is absolutely stunning. There were some colours that they didn't have in stock. And when I received them, I realised that there was another company in the UK that also sold them. So I went and checked out their website too. And their link will be in the description box below. Now this is fusible film. That's what you need to be searching for. Fusible film. So I got out my heat gun. I cut up some of the film and I started mucking around with it. Started playing to my heart's content. I actually just been talking to Daniel and he encouraged me to just get up and do it. You see, I'd always searched for dichroic film, but you need this Angelina film, which is fusible, it's heat fusible. And wow, you do need quite a high temperature to get this stuff to stick to itself, but it changes color, it crinkles, and it gives you such amazing patterns. Now, it is different when you put it on a black background and when you put it on a white background. So I thought I'd show you what it looks like on both. It isn't just a little bit different. 
It's a massive difference. Blue, purple, green to completely pink. Some of the films are a lot more translucent than some of the others. I'm guessing it's just what you need and what you want at the time. I do believe these are meant to be ironed and I haven't tried the iron yet. I was just trying the heat gum because that's what thrilled me the most. It's the unevenness, the bumpiness that I was looking for because that's where you get the light that sparkles all over the place and it really gives you colour that you wasn't even thinking of. I'm actually thrilled with how this stuff is working. This was late one afternoon and I was in my element. Look at the difference between a black and a white background. Now I'm not a green person, so with this one I prefer the white, but I still appreciate how beautiful it is. Now this is just with two bits of film. Let's try and add another two bits. So we've got four bits of film. I was so excited. I was just so excited. I could not stop. I'm not gonna bore you with everything I did, but I want to show you the highlights. With this, I've decided to try and flatten it out a bit, but I really don't like it flat. I like it with a bubbly effect, with the light dancing all over the place and all the different colors that you can see all at once. But I did need to know how it looked when it was flat, because some pieces you are gonna get bubbles in, but look at the different colors in that film and it's different on each side. Different with a white background, different with a black background. This stuff is so much fun to play around with. Cobalt blue. I did not expect this to be anything other than blue. I was so surprised when I opened it up with the black behind it and it looked gold green. Very surprised. But there are a lot of colours to choose from. They do tend to mostly go green gold, however, unless you've got white behind it, in which case they will look totally different. But this is such fun, you've really got to try this. Can't encourage you enough, just like Daniel couldn't encourage me enough. It is so mesmerising how it works and what you get. It's just really a lot of fun. It is quite surprising how much heat you need to get this stuff to stick together though. I had it on a hot setting, but you really do need to have it quite hot. But it changes colour when you heat it too. That is beautiful in front of the white though. That is my favourite blue in front of a white background. What do you think with the cobalt blue? Do you prefer the black background or the white background? Let me know in the description box below. I'd be interested to find out. This raspberry, I'm in love with. I am so in love with this. I want to see if it can do anything to the proper green one. So the raspberry definitely is my favourite. And probably because it looks purple on the black background. This is meant to be the sparkle one. Okay, let's see. But it's not green. And most of them were going green gold or green copper. I like copper, however. But I was getting a little bit fed up with green. And to be honest with you, I didn't think it would do that much. I was totally wrong. That is awesome. Can you see that? That is really nice. That copper, you know, the raspberry is stunning. It doesn't look so good on the white. It does not, not do it any favours. Okay, it's official. I was obsessed. Absolutely 100% blown away by this colour. I like red and purple, but pink and purple and green and copper and everything just 
was so stunning. Absolutely gorgeous. So I had made some dichroic film and some of them were absolutely stunning. Some of them were okay, but they all have potential on black or on a white background, whichever pleases you more. Personally, I love having a black background. I think it pushes out the reds and the purples more. However, with that raspberry, I'm not so sure. But I think this stuff is absolutely so much fun and I think you'd love playing with it. So what am I going to make with it? Well, do you remember the resin in the earring mould at the beginning? I figured I'd use that. And I'm going to use Let's Resin UV resin on top to put the dichroic film inside. Now I have spent some time and cut out two of these square earring type pieces from the dichroic film. It did take me a little time to get the angles right, but I got there in the end and I decided to leave a slight gap at the top because the base resin hadn't actually gone up that far. Now, as you can see, I'm struggling to put this piece in, mainly because the dichroic film on the left is a little too thick. It should have been thinner, but I didn't want too much of an edge around it. I wanted it really to take up the entire area. But I'm pushing it down into the UV resin and hopefully getting a seal. This wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. The silicon tool definitely helps push the air out, but the piece on the left definitely needed to be narrower to let the resin flow around it. And I held it down just a little bit at the beginning while it was curing under the Let's Resin lamp. With the teardrop earring piece, I did exactly the same, but it was a lot easier because of the area that I had to cover. It was just a more simple design. I made sure there was enough UV resin in there. I gave it a quick flick with a lighter to get rid of any surface bubbles. And it was just popping the film on top. It was just so much easier. And the silicon tool definitely helps to get out anything that might be stuck underneath. Any of those little air pockets. Quite simple way to make these pieces really. And again, they went under the lamp for five minutes. I love this UV lamp. You can just press it for five minutes and walk away. Now, as you may have guessed, there is no way I could imagine cutting out a piece of dichroic film for the other two shapes, especially the leaves at the top right hand corner. So what I decided to do was cut up some of the dichroic film that I had used in the other two pieces, the little bits that were left, into tiny, tiny little shapes and add those tiny little bits on top of each other into the design. Now I knew this wasn't going to be as nice as a whole piece of film, but I just couldn't think that it would be very easy to cut these shapes out. Maybe you're better at doing that than I am. So that's what I did for both those pieces. When they were all cured up, I wanted to put black behind. So I'm going to use some black polyurethane resin. This was bought from I Love Mixed Media here in the UK. And it's a extremely quick curing PU resin. It's solid black. And in my opinion, if you're going to use this, don't mix up too much at a time. Honestly, it goes off in the cup if you're not careful. So I mixed up enough for two of the pairs. One was a little short, but it was fine. I could put some more on the back of that one. And then I mixed up enough for the other two pairs. Now, I could have used white. I could have used white polyurethane. I have some of that as well. But I decided I like the black. You don't have to use polyurethane, by the way. You could use two-part epoxy resin that you colour black. Or you could use a very thin layer of UV resin that has a little bit of a black tint. That is also quite quick. And I don't, I'm pretty sure that Daniel Cooper does that quite a bit. So 
So this was only about half an hour later. I couldn't wait to see these pieces. I'm demolding the leaves and I think they are absolutely gorgeous. I think perhaps they could have done with a few more pieces of the film in. The same with the round ones. But let's have a look at the teardrops. I couldn't wait to get the teardrops out. I think these are going to be my favourite. Oh my word. If I can hold it in my hand, I absolutely love them. They are stunning. The little round pieces are very much going to be like the leaves, but I still think they're gorgeous. And likewise, they could have done with some more overlapping film, but I think they came out a little better, brighter than the leaves. Now down to the odd shape square pieces. Will they turn out how I imagined? Wow, they are stunning. Now they do have issues. There are areas there with quite large bubbles in those square pieces, but I intend to make the teardrops and the square pieces into something else. So that's going to be another little video, hopefully on Friday. I've made the two round ones into key rings and again I'm going to do something with the leaves as well. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video and I really hope you're going to try this idea for yourself. It is so much fun and the pieces that you get from this dichroic film are gorgeous. Anyway, come back and see me next week. You never know what I'm going to be up to. I never know what I'm going to be up to. Have a great week, happy crafting, and bye for now.